Hello, hello. I hope uh, everything works, the technology, the sound is coming through. And we are ready to begin. Uh, this is the webinar for the open call for proposals of the, op of the Common Fund for Commodities. Uh, the time in Amsterdam is uh, 3 p.m. We are going to take one hour to go through the open call. So good afternoon or maybe good morning or good evening to everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Andrei Kulishov. I am uh, Chief of Strategy and Development for the Common Fund for Commodities. And uh, here with me, uh, we have Mr. Chris Rallis, who is the Investment Manager at the Common Fund for Commodities. So together, the two of us uh, will uh, uh, try to see you through the uh, essentials of the open call for proposals. Now, uh, a few technical notes. If you uh, uh, are disconnected, if anything is interrupted, uh, please reconnect with the same credentials and we will back online in no time at all. It is a lot easier to, or it's, it's uh, very efficient to answer uh, questions in the chat box. So please don't hesitate to uh, mention your questions in the chat box. One question that uh, I can foresee already is uh, regarding the presentation. And yes, we will share the presentation to the email address. Yes, a mistake. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, I am unmuted. Yes. OK, so uh, now the presentation will be shared to uh, all uh, participants who registered with the email. Uh, please uh, mute your microphone when you are not speaking to keep the disruption to the virtual meeting room to the minimum. Uh, and uh, if you need to at attract our attention, please use the chat box or wave uh, your hands on the camera. Somebody will see you. We have a few of my colleagues uh, also working in the background. So uh, some answers in the chat box will be coming up as I continue speaking. So that uh, completes the technical side of the presentation. And I believe we still have some, uh, yes, okay. Now, uh, Proceeding uh, to the substance, uh, what is the Common Fund for Commodities? Uh, what is it that we do? Why is the focus on commodities uh, significant? And finally, going to the open call for proposals. So this is the plan for the coming one hour. And moving forward. Common Fund for Commodities, it's a fairly small organization, not widely known, but we have a massive uh, footprint. And there is, uh, there is a question in the chat box that uh, the sound is not coming through. I believe that uh, the sound is broadcasting fine from our side. So please uh, check your sound settings. Uh, so small organization, uh, with a large footprint, a global presence, and the global impact. Uh, Intergovernmental financial institution established in 1989 by the government, by the members of the United Nations. Uh, currently, we count 101 member countries. Uh, we only have our headquarters in the Netherlands. Uh, we do not have local presence, but we work closely with the partners in our projects who are based locally. Uh, we have a number of international organizations as our members, as our institutional members, in addition to country membership. And this includes uh, the European Union, the African Union, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, the West African Economic Community, and uh, others, also the Andean community and the Caribbean uh, development community and so on. 
the common fund counts uh, 34 years of operations. We have financed over 500 projects over this time. So that gives you an idea of our broad outreach. Uh, we have covered projects in uh, 99 countries to the best estimates that we can make. And uh, the total value of our projects uh, is, is uh, well, it's the number is uh, the number uh, is not there, but it's uh, over 500 million uh, contributed by the CFC and the total value is uh, exceeding 800 million. So uh, proceeding to the substance, and that's the focus of the common fund on uh, commodities. Now, in principle, uh, the CFC operates as impact investing. And the paradigm is that impact investing in the commodity sector delivers the greatest and the most uh, efficient uh, benefits to the primary producers of commodities. So the end beneficiaries of the CFC projects are the primary producers of the commodities which are traded around the world. And to mention a few, that's coffee, cotton, uh, cocoa, grains, roots and tubers, and so on. The CFC investments uh, look to transform commodity value chains towards greater equity and sustainability. And this is fundamentally in the constitution of the organization, equitable benefits from production and trade of commodities is the core, is the fundamental, it's the foundation of the CFC. We implement this uh, by uh, pursuing our vision, which is to strengthen and diversify the commodity sector in developing countries uh, and to transform the commodity sector in developing countries in the ways that it can contribute to sustainable development as uh, proportionally to the contribution that those countries make to the global economy. Uh, this is delivered uh, in our mission, which uh, focuses to contribute to poverty alleviation and the strengthening of in income generating capacity of the producers, mitigating the vulnerabilities and generally enhancing the economic well-being of uh, the developing countries who depend on commodities. The following slide, I think, is the most fundamental for the understanding of the impact of the CFC, of the theory of change, as they call it, of the, of the CFC. This is uh, what our operations essentially aim to achieve. Now, we recognize that the primary producers of most commodities, which are the target for the CFC, and I'm going to take a pointer, are the smallholder farmers. So the smallholder farmers is essentially where the CFC intends to create its impact. Now, uh, the smallholder farmers contribute to the international commodity markets. Uh, coffee grown in Ethiopia, for example, for example, comes to be traded in uh, in uh, United Arab Emirates, and it comes to be traded in New York and all over the world. So there is a link between the uh, between the primary producers who are based at the grassroots level, as low as uh, as uh, at, as close to the base of the pyramid as possible and the global markets, and these are the small and medium enterprises. So the small and medium enterprises provide the essential bridge that uh, allow the primary producers of commodities to supply to the global markets. And at the same time, this bridge transmits the value from the global markets to the primary producers, allowing the primary producers to benefit from the uh, production and trade of commodities. And this is the target for the CFC intervention small and medium enterprises that connect smallholder farmers to the global markets so that the impact from the CFC activities, it's not the money of the CFC that makes the difference. It's the money of the global commodity markets that makes the difference for the primary commodity producers. And the CFC facilitates the process by investing in a small and medium enterprises 
that deliver those commodities to, to the global markets. Now, uh, as, as examples of what the CFC uh, can invest in, it's uh, processing, it's storage of commodities, it's quality improvement, it's the innovation in the production of commodities, marketing, distribution and sales on the market side, and logistics and inputs on the production side. So the CFC can target all the sides of supplying uh, the primary commodities to, to the global markets in the interest of the primary producers. Now, the CFC offers a range of instruments for this purpose, for, for its interventions, and that's trade finance, uh, by far the most, uh, the most popular instrument in the CFC projects. Uh, capital expenditure loans are also possible, working capital loans also possible, and quasi-equity products. We do not exclude them, but they're usually more complicated and they require a greater amount of work and uh, only apply in a few cases. So uh, this diagram, we may be coming back to it as we go through the presentation today, because that is the essential of where the CFC comes into the commodity value chains, which connects smallholder farmers to the global market, creating benefits for everyone. So the open call for proposals then is the main instrument for the CFC to find suitable investment opportunities. And I will go in a few steps through the uh, fundamentals, what it is that we're looking for in the open call and the application process. Uh, how do you complete the application form? In summary, so if uh, if you if uh, you wanted to ask the question, what is it that the CFC is looking for? The normal question is, uh, what do I need to put in the uh, request for financing to be successful in the application to the CFC? Well, we cannot tell you what, but we can certainly say that we are looking at the agricultural commodity sector as a primary focus. And there we look, uh, we can work with the cooperatives, we can work with the development institutions, we can work with almost anyone who is active in the agricultural commodity sector, and we wholeheartedly invite everybody to apply. There are no specific formal limits on the type of an organization that can apply for CFC financing. Now, uh, because the CFC resources are fairly small and we have an extremely wide mandate, we aim to look for innovation and positive change. We aim to look for something that can be demonstrated to be successful and that could potentially be replicated with greater resources if successful. Some uh, examples are listed on the screen. That's agroforestry, increasingly popular, increasingly interesting uh, dimension. Climate smart agriculture, renewable energy has uh, fairly recently come into the CFC portfolio. Food security, uh, preventing deforestation, digitalization as well, financial inclusion, and anything that can bring in a positive difference for the primary commodity producer. Now, we do require uh, proposals uh, seeking CFC financing to be able to demonstrate financial viability. That is, we look for the numbers that demonstrate that the proposed operation, uh, once the CFC support has been delivered, that this operation can achieve self-sustainability and therefore become viable once the CFC project has been concluded. And there will be more explanation about it uh, from Chris in a few minutes. So this is what the CFC is looking for. And now I will say a few words about the process. So how, the, how this goes. So how do we go through the project proposals? Uh, we have this open call. Anybody can apply. The application form can be downloaded from the internet, it's fairly straightforward. We try to ask just the questions that are essential for us 
to be able to decide if the project can be financed by the CFC. We're trying to keep uh, the information to the absolute required minimum, to the essentials. Uh, we have uh, two application cycles per year, ending in April and in September. So basically the open call for proposals to the CFC is always open. Whatever we receive by the end of April and whatever we receive by the end of September goes in the next cycle, will be processed, considered, and you will get the results in the, in the six months after the completion of the call for proposals. So as you can see, the call number 24 has finished on the 30th of April, and we are now in the cycle number 25 that will end on the 1st October. I will show you the calendar for the for the 25th call in, uh, in a few moments. There will be a six month time for us to consider the proposals. Uh, as we are communicating with the, with the project proponents, at any time during this cycle, we may have to come in and we may have to ask for additional information with regard to the proposals received. And we count on your understanding that, that uh, if, we, if we are asking for information, then we really need it to proceed with the consideration of the proposal. We typically receive uh, between 150 and 200 applications per cycle. And therefore, we have to concentrate our efforts on the applications where the proponents are responsive and the applications that can uh, run a realistic chance of uh, receiving support from the CFC governing bodies. So uh, once we receive the application, uh, every proposal will be read by somebody and a screening checklist will be completed to confirm that the application meets the minimum CFC requirements. Those proposals that have passed through the screening process by the CFC will go to the CFC Consultative Committee. And that's an independent body of nine experts from all over the world, specialists in commodities, who meet physically twice a year in January and in July. And they review the qualifying proposals in terms of their technical feasibility, and then they make a recommendation on the terms and conditions for potential CFC support and the recommendation to the executive board of the CFC if this proposal can be recommended for approval of the executive board. So this whole process uh, that, that you see, it um, will uh, lead to the decision by the executive board. Uh, the executive board meets twice a year as well. So two cycles, consultative committee, executive board, and the decisions are made in April and in October. So each April and each October, the executive board decides on the next batch of project proposals. And after this decision is made, uh, there's approximately six to 12 months for us to complete all the relevant documentation. And this is the process that you can see on the screen. So uh, the decision of the executive board is based on the documents that we have received. We will not go on site of the project before decision by the executive board. Now, once the decision has been made positively, then there will be a set of conditions to be met, decided on case by case basis by the executive board. Uh, we will need to go on a due diligence uh, on the project site to verify the information contained in the documents and we will need to uh, prepare the legal documentation for the project and agree with the project proponents so we can disburse the funds. And the legal documentation includes the term sheet, eventually the agreement, and the final contract on our involvement in a particular project. So the whole process, uh, it looks lengthy, there may be challenges, there may be questions to be answered, but we do expect this process to, con to, to be completed within 12 months after approval by the executive board. 
And as I promised a few moments ago, this is the calendar for the current 25th round of open call for proposals. So between now and the 1st October, we receive applications. So you can send an application to the, to the uh, regular address of the CFC, uh, open call at commonfund.org. It will be on the slide later. It's also on our website. So application form completed can be sent to the open call address. Starting from 2nd October, we have approximately six weeks, maybe eight weeks to read all the proposals and to uh, do the initial screening of applications. In December, we will submit the qualifying proposals for consideration by the consultative committee. And in January, the consultative committee will meet, review and make a recommendation to the executive board. If a recommendation is positive, then we will come back with the questions uh, regarding comments of the consultative committee. And if everything is addressed successfully, then in April 2025, the proposal will be seen by the executive board of the CFC. And after the executive board, then the process follows to conclude the legal documents and to uh, release the money to projects approved for financing. So I hope uh, this is enough information for you regarding the process and the timeline, how it goes. So now we get to the core of the presentation and that's the application form. So how does one complete the application form? Well, this is a general slide. This is the composition of the application form. And I, uh, before I hand over to my colleague, I would like to mention a few things uh, regarding the applications to the CFC. Uh, the CFC does not expect any fees uh, in connection with the application. So if anybody asks you to pay for making an application to the CFC, the CFC is not involved in it. The CFC is not part of it. Uh, the CFC does not require any application fees. We do expect a complete and accurate information on the application form. As I mentioned, we take the proposal all the way to the executive board based on the information contained in the documents. But once the proposal has been approved, we will go and check that this information is valid. And it will be pity to find that uh, there, there was an incorrect or inaccurate or incomplete information. So it's most appreciated if the information is accurate and complete. Uh, because uh, the CAC has, uh, I think, six uh, investment managers, and we receive uh, up to 200 plus project proposals per investment cycle. We ask for your understanding that we can only enter correspondence with regards to project proposals receiving positive consideration. We would like to talk to everyone, but we have to focus our time on those proposals that stand a realistic chance of getting approval and successfully using the financing of the CFC. So uh, every application to the CFC uh, through the open call will be acknowledged. But if you have not heard from the CFC for six months after that, that's within the next cycle, you can assume that the application has not been accepted. Uh, also, please do have a look on the exclusion list of the CFC that's published on the website. There, there are certain things that we never finance, uh, no matter uh, how attractive the proposal is. And finally, uh, some proposals may involve confidential information. We will only use the information provided to the CFC for the purpose of making a proper submission to the governing bodies of the CFC regarding the approval of the project proposal. Any confidential information contained in the project proposals needs to be clearly indicated, and we do require the right to use this information for the purpose of making a submission to our governing bodies. We will not disclose this information any further. Please do indicate any confidential data as you are submitting the application form. Now, uh, at the bottom of the screen, 
you see the email address, opencall at commonfund.org. And I would like to invite uh, Mr. Chris Rallis to take us through the contents of the application form. Thank you. Uh, Chris, tell me when to flip the slides. Please go to the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you everyone for attending our webinar and also for considering our call for proposals. My name is Chris Rallis, and today I will walk you through the CFC application form and share with you some tips and information on how to write an effective and why not a successful funding proposal. Before I start, uh, a very general but important advice is to keep less is more. Try to keep your application short and simple. This increases the chances that we better understand your application and your goal, and that also increases your chances for success. Now, uh, the first uh, chapter of the application form called organization background, uh, we would, in this part, in particular in the first uh, section, 1.1, uh, what we simply want you to do is to write down the name of the organization or company that you're representing, uh, the legal type of the organization, who are the founders, and when and where was this organization uh, was incorporated or registered. For example, the CFC was established in 1989 by 101 countries, and it's based in the Netherlands. Simple as that. In section 1.2, uh, you have to write uh, the country or countries uh, where your organization is operating or it is based. What we want to know here is that you're either based in a CFC member country or that your activities and operation benefit a CFC member. Moving on the final section uh, in 1.3, uh, here, uh, what you have to do uh, is basically provide a short summary of the financing objectives, the objectives you want to achieve through our CFC financing. Uh, this means that we would like to know some more information, what's your goals and what you seek to achieve here. Next slide, please. Yeah, the next uh, chapter in the application form uh, concerns the type of financing uh, that you will be requesting from the CFC. But before we move to the different types of uh, instruments that the CFC has, uh, a few important information. Uh, first of all, the CFC's share of financing does not exceed 50%. What that means is that CFC funds should always and at least be matched with other sources of funds, such as other loans, loans you have with other banks or impact investors or development banks. It could be equity investments that you did in the past in your company or you're planning to do in the future, or it could simply be retained earnings from your company. I welcome you here to be creative and in case you there is any misunderstanding or you need extra information please feel free to contact us the second uh information that you will require is the duration of our loans now the cfc enters only into long-term partnership agreements that means that we will be offering and signing a framework agreement for at least three to five years and in some uh, cases even longer. This uh, concerns also our short-term financing tools, such as trade finance or working capital facilities, which typically uh, concern 12 to 18 months uh, cash cycles. Finally, uh, the elephant in the room and the big question that you might have is our interest rates. Uh, the Common Fund for Commodities has a very transparent way of calculating interest rates. Uh, basically, we take into consideration the country credit risk plus the company-specific uh, risk profile. Of course, we also take into consideration the impact that this company tries to achieve. What that means in practice? 
usually that means that we are cheaper than the national uh, financial systems. And even more usually, we're on the low side among our peers, other impact investors or development banks out there. Of course, uh, if your proposal is successful, you will receive a term sheet which will ex be explaining our terms and conditions. Now, moving into the next slide, please. Here we have the different types of financing uh, that the CFC can offer. The first one is trade finance. This is short-term financing for the execution of, of specific client orders. This uh, could range from trade finance, very common among trader companies like you, uh, against shipping documents. But it could be uh, a dispersion that it will happen even earlier in the cash cycle. For example, when the company sources its raw materials from farmers, the kind of pre-finance. What is important here to know is uh, that in this case, if you want to apply for trade finance, what we need to know is the specific clients that you want to connect the facility uh, that you are requesting. This is very important for us to see the eligibility of your request. A very good example of that, imagine a Ugandan coffee producer uh, exporting uh, coffee in a Dutch trader. What the CFC will be doing is dispersing a loan based on that purchase order. And then repayment will follow back to uh, the CFC uh, through your client. This is a big advantage of this facility is that normally we do not require any other form of collateral. And actually, this is our bread and butter business and by far our most popular facility. Now, a more flexible uh, anti-short-term financing uh, tool is our working capital facilities, where CFC exercise limited uh, control over the cash cycle. But in this case, we would require a stronger collateral. You can think here of a pledge on inventory, uh, maybe a third-party guarantee from another financial institution or a country uh, or government or you could consider a collateral management structure. The rule of thumb here for you to understand is that the longer the cash cycle of a company, the more securities we would likely be asking. The third one, term loans, a classic product of the CFC uh, concerns loans for CAPEC investments, for example, for the establishment of a new factory, uh, the purchase of machinery, or the building of warehouses. Uh, for this kind of uh, loans, we usually offer a duration of five to seven years, and we could also consider uh, a grace period of maximum two years. Next slide, please. Equity. Uh, a lot of you actually sent in for, uh, questions over it. Equity is part of the CFC mandate. But unfortunately, as Adre said earlier, uh, we do not do equity investments directly to companies at the moment. But what we do is equity investments towards other uh, impact investment funds that have a riskier profile that in CFC, or they are designed for a particular impact on the agriculture sector. Then uh, we have our development impact bond. Uh, an instrument of high strategic value for the CFC. Uh, the Common Fund for Commodities was one of the first financial institution ever designed something like that. Uh, it's basically an outcomes-based financing. And when we say outcomes, we mean tangible and measurable impact. Uh, it's an instrument designed particularly for NGOs, government agencies, or international organizations that have a project in mind uh, with particular outcomes to be achieved. If you are such an actor, please feel free to use this facility. Next slide, please. Our final type of uh, financing is our fast track loans. This could be either repayable loans 
or non-repayable funding. I have to say here, this is one of very popular options for our applicants, but it concerns only uh, applications for funding for up to 300,000 euros or USD. And it should always concern really innovative projects with very high impact potential and also bring great additionality to the common fund for commodities. The success rates for these instruments are usually low, but still, if you have an innovative idea or very impactful idea, feel welcome to use this instrument. Next slide, please. We move now to chapter three, management and operations. And in the section 3.1, management and ownership, what you uh, what we want you to do here is basically provide the names of the people managing the company. Uh, is there a board of directors? If yes, please explain the structure and provide the names of the directors. And in addition, what we would like to know is who are the shareholders of the company? Is it a holding company that owes other companies or is it a company that is part of a larger business group? Of course, you can do it by text, but you can also provide a simple graph explaining those relationships. Uh, an org chart is very useful, and or a graph showing the different ownership uh, structures, it's always useful. Also, in your application, you can attach the CVs, you can attach org charts, or any other relevant to corporate governance information. In section 3.2, and in my opinion, maybe the most important one, what we want to have is a very high level description of what the company does. So please assume here that we know nothing about, about the company and also about the value chain where you work and operate. So you would start with describing the type of the company you are, uh, what kind of products you have, how do you source your own materials, what kind of processing do you do, and of course, extra information, like what kind of facilities do you have? How many employees do you have in your company? And the most important thing, please explain to us who are your end clients and to which countries do you export? That's all very key information. And if you want to substantiate them, what you can do, you can always use figures and numbers. For example, provide your sourcing volumes per year. I source 1,000 tons of cocoa per year. Or you could provide your export volumes. Or you can provide distribution of your exports per country. It, details matter for us to better understand your case. Next slide, please. Chapter four concerns market opportunity. What you have to, the underlying question here is, what is the market environment where your company operates and how your company fits in that environment. So started with section 4.1, market position and, compete, and competition. What you have to do is to explain to us the market and the industry and also the basic ca characteristic of that market that you are operating in. So think about questions like the market that you're in, is it very competitive? Uh, or are you on the only one company offer that specific service of product? Are you competing with your competitors in terms of pricing or quality? Please, here is a place where you can explain to us in more details the products you have and how those products are different from the ones of your uh, client, from competitors. I'm sorry. Other things that you would have to explain here is your sourcing strategy. How do you manage your sourcing network? Uh, particularly concerning smallholder farmers. Is it a spot market or you offer your farmers long-term government contracts? And do you provide pre-financing to them? Those are all important information that you have to include because here is where the impact that the CFC looks for is. In the next uh, section, 4.2, key strength of your business model is basically where you showcase your business. 
Do you have a niche product? Do you have a high quality product? Or you have a product that's very different, different from your competitors? Do you have a unique selling proposition? Or you have a very diversified product portfolio? Are you certified in terms of organic certification, Rainforest Alliance, or other relevant certification? This information, you have to include them in 4.2. So we better understand your position in the market. Finally, in 4.3, this is, let's say, the moment of truth. This is where you describe the limitations of your company. So you have to be honest here. Describe what obstacles you face during your operations. Can you find sufficient number of employees? Can you find skilled employees for your business? Are there any other internal or external shortcomings that you might want to consider? For example, the regulatory environment, this is the information you can keep uh, in this part. And if we move into the next slide, please. Proposed operational module, basically this chapter mirrors the information you provided in the previous uh, chapter. So what we want to see here is what is the impact that CFC financing will have in your business. What we want to learn here is if we disperse a loan, will there be any ch changes in your business model? Will you increase your client base, more clients or different types of countries uh, to export? Uh, will you increase your supply chain? Uh, you will have more farmers or different kind of products from them. Also, would you apply new production processing activities? Things like that. And finally, and most important, innovation. Will CFC funding allow you to innovate? Now, innovation, a very broad uh, term, but it could be a new technology that you will be using, a new processing uh uh, plan, or maybe a new business model, or a new product for your country. Let's say, for example, a uh, Ugandan company for the first time uh, creates uh, an agrochemistry project, something new for the country. That's innovation. Innovation is something that we really value in the CFC. we we'll go to the next slide, please. I will leave this one to my colleague, Andre. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Chris. So to give you a small pause, uh, so the CFC is called an impact investment fund, operates as an impact investment fund. And that means that we not only look for financial sustainability of the proposal seeking our financial support, but we're also looking at the development impacts that they're going to create through this exact uh, diagram that I have shown earlier. I promise to come back to it and I will. So this is the impact model of the CFC. We expect to see that the CFC financing entering a small and medium enterprise addresses some of the uh, limitations of this small and medium enterprise to be able to deliver effective impact on the primary producers of commodities. So this is the uh, foundation of the CFC impact model. And we will be looking for the evidence that this impact can be delivered. Now, firstly, we project the impact in terms of the sustainable development goals. And the CFC follows a number of core sustainable development goals. And that's no poverty, no hunger, gender equality, decent work and economic conditions, climate change, and uh, uh, economic development. So uh, with those core sustainable development goals, we expect to see some of the indicators which the company promises to monitor. Nothing too complicated, but for example, the number of women in the senior management of the company or the number of smallholder farmers that will benefit from the activities of the company are essential indicators of the potential impact of the project proposal. Uh, everybody is asking about the baseline situation in the, uh, in the sector, in the case of a company, 
in uh, particular uh, circumstances. So any data that you can find regarding what they call the poverty profile of the final beneficiaries. For example, there can be national statistics on the level of poverty in a particular area. Children going to school, uh, levels of malnutrition. We need some baseline information to be able to demonstrate that our project had a certain valuable impact on the target uh, people, on the people who are expected to benefit from the project. Uh, the CFC, since uh, about five years ago, the CFC is also obliged to run a social and environmental risk management system. This means that we will also look to identify potential social and environmental risks like uh, water pollution, deforestation, land degradation, and so on. So we will look to identify those risks. And if those risks are present in the project, then we will also want to understand how the proponents expect to mitigate those risks so that the positive effect of the project is not diluted by, by its adverse impact. So these are the sections regarding development impact. And uh, we do apply IRIS Plus system of indicators published by the Global Impact Investment Network. It's a very comprehensive uh, set of indicators where you can find almost anything that uh, can realistically affect the impact of the projects. We do not expect you to complete all 30,000 plus indicators, but pick the indicators that are visible in the project proposals, and we will want to monitor those indicators as the project goes along. So uh, there is a link to the website of the Global Impact Investment Network where you can see the details of this scheme. And there are sample indicators provided in the Excel worksheets that can be downloaded together with the applications. We tried to guess which of the indicators are most suitable in the case of small and medium enterprises in the commodity value chains. So uh, the next slide concerns the assessment of financial performance of the proposal, and I will give the floor back to Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. So before we enter this chapter, a uh, quick reminder, along with the application form, you have to submit an Excel template where you have to fill in your historical information financial information, plus the impact indicators that Andre just explained. So in chapter seven, you don't need to provide any graphs or figures or anything else. That's something that you have to include in that Excel form. But in chapters 7.1 and 7.2, what you can do is provide the narrative, the story behind the numbers. So you provide an explanation of the amount of your revenues, why it's low, why it's high, why it is they are increasing, or an explanation about your future margins. Particularly in the section 7.2, what we want to see is the assumptions of your projections. So if you're projecting a 10% increase of, uh, of sales every year, what's your assumption? What's, is it higher price? Will you be selling higher volumes? We want to see the story behind those numbers. What you can do, simple bullet points with short phrases that explain your basic assumptions in your model. Particularly, I want you to pay attention in section 7.3. This is where you have to put your so other sources of funding. So here, a simple list of your other loans, bank loans, uh, the duration of your, those loans, the interest rates that you're paying, uh, or, or the name, actually, of the financier that you're getting a loan from. That's all important information that we need to know because this is where we find what we call the additionality of CFC. We want to see where we fit in your uh, financing sources, and it's very important for us. So here, a simple table with a list of names of financiers along with the amounts that you have got from them, along with the interest rate, is more than enough. Finally, in the section 7.4, what you have to do is basically consider your main risks, the main operation or other risks that you might face, 
and also consider what do you do to mitigate those risks. For example, climate change or adverse weather conditions, it's a high risk. What do you do for that? Maybe you are using a very innovative farming application that helps you monitor better the weather. Or let's say other operational uh, risks. For example, lack of technology in the country. What do you do? Do you import your machinery? Uh, do you have your own machinery that you can easily maintain? Things like that. And if we go to the next slide, please. Here we have the example from the Excel sheet uh, where you have to put the profit and loss statement, the historical information for the last three years. Uh, there should not be any surprise there. It's a very simple model uh, that probably everyone uses uh, in their business activities. And also in the next slide, you can find next slide, yeah, you can find the simple balance sheet model that you can use uh, to uh, put your information in. And if we go to the next slide. This is one of the final uh, chapters of the application form. And it's a simple uh, document checklist. Two things, the required information and recommended information. The required information are basically audited financial statements for the last three years. Now, good question. If you don't have audited financial statements, what happens? You can send any other equivalent. You may not have audited financial statements, but you may have uh, financial statements that have been uh, checked by a public accountant, or you could not have any financial statements. You have them in an Excel form. Please send it to us so we will be checking on them. Financial projections are part of the Excel template that we discussed earlier. The impact indicators, also part of the Excel template. The company registration documents and an org chart that shows the organizational structuring of the company plus the ownership structure. That's the required information. Now for the recommended information, you can attach everything that you think that is relevant. Do you have a business plan or a pitch deck for investors or for clients? Please send it to us. It helps us to understand more your business. CVs of your managers or board of directors, please attach them. Uh, if you have any articles of association or have you ever done environmental or social impact assessment or do you have any type of certification, attach them. They're always useful to us. And finally, the last slide. Yeah, simple box in the end of the application form. Uh, some information that you need to fill, the name of the organization, type of organization, when you were registered. Uh, your personal uh, email, so we can contact you. This is very important. We need to have a contact person. And finally, the website of the company, if it has one. And the final slide should be about affirmation. Here, basically, you confirm that you're duly authorized to submit this application. And a successful application is done. Thank you, Chris, uh, for uh, being right on time. Uh, we have about five minutes where we can take a few questions. And thank you for uh, staying with us so far. Uh, there's a question in the chat box that uh, I did not manage to answer. And that is, uh, considering that we take up to 12 months to sanction the projects, do we expect finalized financing for 50%? or is work in progress good enough? And I would say that we expect uh, to see a clear vision of the operational case, of the business case, the management case, and a financial projection that says that there, this is how our business is going to be successful. And uh, if it gets, or once it gets the approval of the executive board, then we will ask you, so please confirm that you can find co-financing, and this uh, sometimes this is uh, this is a this is uh, what keeps projects delayed 
is because people expect financing, but co-financing with the CFC, but are not finding the other partners. So uh, it's it's up to you. Uh, we can give approval without or before someone else gives approval, but in the end, we will not be able to release the funding until you have all financing confirmed. May I add here, Andre, for the people to better understand that if they don't have uh, in the application form, you would write your co-financing sources. But please, I invite you to be creative. If you, again, if you already done some investment on the company, that counts as co-financing. You don't need to find another source. If you have other loans from banks, those are co-financing sources. You can use them to match the amount. So always consider that, be creative, and try to submit. We will see if it's truthful or not in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And I'm reading one more question. So if the project is, is about taking commodities process and offer to final clients, is it eligible to apply? And the simple answer is yes, but we are not able to make uh, useful comments on a specific business case because we need to see the details in the application form. Please complete the application form to the best of your uh, ability. Also, mind you, uh, there is the email address on the screen, and this is a real email address that comes to a real person's mailbox. And we uh, certainly try to answer all the questions we get on this email address. So this email address is always open and there's always a real person behind it. Also, I'm taking notes of the email addresses in the chat box. So my colleagues will uh, save uh, a copy and we will make sure that all the email addresses are covered in the post meeting circulation. So we have time for probably just one more question. And uh, otherwise, again, we encourage uh, the webinar ends, but again, our, our contacts are always open. Is 1 million turnover uh, qualification important or is the company with less can apply? Uh, we have a fairly uh, tolerant criteria in terms of, of the turnover. We do look for the experience and we do look for the clear understanding that uh, the people behind the project have the knowledge of the uh, value chain where they are trying to operate. And we can go as low as uh, 300,000, I think. Right, uh, any uh, more questions that we could answer? If not, then Chris, any last minute remarks? No, please uh, feel free to contact us if you need any more information. We have other webinars during the year that you can attend to if you need more information. And success in your application. We will be happy to receive them. Thank you. Yes, I join the, the good wishes. And I wish everyone a nice day. We conclude the webinar now. Thank you very much.